me you woke up this morning and wondered what all the tomfoolery was about, thinking that maybe April 1st came a day early. After all, are we being pranked? We're supposed to be celebrating that risen is God's son, and yet the sun is obscured by clouds and rain. And I kind of thought, you know what, that might be a great metaphor for us to take today. If you are in a dark place right now, or if your life just seems to be living under that proverbial cloud, there is a truth that shines in spite of that, and that truth is, He is risen. He is risen indeed. And that changes everything. So we're so glad you're here today. Welcome to Bethany on this Easter Sunday. I invite you to stand. join me in the opening prayer found on page three of your bulletin. Almighty God, who through the death of your Son has destroyed sin and death, and through his resurrection has restored innocence and eternal life, that we, being delivered from the power of the devil, may live in your kingdom. 
Through Jesus' resurrection from the dead, a new day has dawned. Yet, I admit that like those who came to the tomb that first Easter, I've been slow to understand God's Word. Like the disciples who, when they first heard that Jesus had risen, I too must confess that I have failed to always trust God's promises. I confess to the Lord, who is Jesus is alive. The victory is won. This same Jesus who has conquered sin and the grave has called me here to witness to the power and to the truth of his resurrection. Your forgiveness is certain, for sin, death, and the devil are defeated because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. You may be seated.
Would you join me in reading Psalm 23 together? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy God and thy staff will comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head, my cup, my glory. Sure the goodness and mercy shall follow me. Good morning. Our first reading for this Easter Sunday comes from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, his first letter. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through which its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through this foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. This is the word of the Lord.
Um, I'm going to invite the kids forward. And I'm going to invite Kaylee forward. Because it's her turn to lead the children's sermon. All right, you all just keep on coming. <laughs> Give me time to think about what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> Good morning, friends. Any of you get a, like a cool Easter basket or anything fun today? I'm so sad, PK. I'm sorry, Ellie. Oh, oh, shh, shh. I'm so sad. I'm so sad this morning. I'm so sad. Kaylee, I'm what, sorry, I tried. What's I, going on? I tried to get myself together. I, I, I had cereal for breakfast and now my stomach hurts. <laughs> and I put this on to try to make me happy, but it's itchy in the ears that won't stay off. It makes me very sad to see you in that myself. So, but, but why are you so sad? I am so sad. I don't know if you heard me. What? what? Jesus. Did you guys know that Jesus died? Yeah, but so you guys sad. don't look as sad as her. Why not? Why are you sad? Jesus died. Because what? He's alive. He's a what? He's alive. He's what? alive. What? what? Jesus, did Jesus stay dead? No. What? He came back to life? Why am I crying then? I have no idea. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Jesus didn't stay dead? He's alive? Jesus is alive? Jesus is alive! <laughs> Jesus is alive! Jesus, Jesus, so <laughs> Jesus is alive. What's that? Hold on, what does it mean? That it, you know, it means that stuff, you know, fell down that'll never get back up again. No. And should not go into your mouth. Stuff like sin and death and the devil is all falling down. It has no power. It is no good. It's all gone because Jesus is alive again. Because Jesus rose. All because that Jesus stuff rose. Yes. Don't eat those candies. I probably... <laughs> guys. Guess we'll what? give you good ones. Guess what? Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is sad? He defeated death for me? He defeated sin for me? Did he do that for you? Oh my goodness, Christ is risen! All right, let's go ahead and fold our hands, and I'm going to pray for you guys this morning. Okay, you can repeat after me though. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus to love us, to teach us, and to die for us. Thank you for sending Jesus to rise again and give us life. All God's children say, Christ is risen! All right, thank you. You can go ahead and go back to your seats.
As has been the tradition in the Christian church since that very first Easter, please stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel this morning comes from the Apostle Mark, 15th chapter. When the day of rest, a holy day was over, Mary from Magdala, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices to go and anoint Jesus. On Sunday, they were going to the tomb very early when the sun had just come up. They said to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had already been rolled away. It was a very large stone. As they went into the tomb, they saw a young man. He was dressed in a white robe and sat on the right side. They were panic stricken. The young man said to them, don't panic, you're looking for Jesus from Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been brought back to life. He's not here. Look at the place where they laid him. Go and tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of them to Galilee. There they will see him just as he told them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Jesus Christ is risen. He's risen indeed.
April Fool's Day prank ready to go? When the kids were little, our house was uh, one of those homes that we loved to do those pranks. My favorite probably ever was the time that Connie made cupcakes for the kids on April 1st, complete with that little paper cup, but it was meatloaf and mashed potatoes and a whole lot of food coloring. (laughs) Nothing wrong with a good prank, especially if it is not meant to demean uh, or not intended to be cruel. One of the disciples that first Easter might have been thinking that he was being played an Easter fool, only it was rather demeaning and cruel if they were indeed pranking for Jesus who was crucified by the Romans on a cross and laid in a grave, they said was alive again. How cruel and demeaning that would have been if it were not true. St. Paul, I think, was thinking about those thoughts when he wrote these words. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. He went on to write in that same letter to the Corinthians, if Christ is not raised from the dead, your faith is folly, for you are still in your sins. Put yourself in that upper room, or excuse me, put yourself in, in that room on that first Easter. Thomas is finally with the whole crowd and he hears the report, some of which you heard earlier from Mark's gospel that tells us the women, they say, Thomas, well, you were out shopping for eggs to hard boil and die. I'm just fooling. (laughs) Thomas, well, you were out. The women, they went to the tomb. They found Jesus was gone. They saw an angel who said he was alive again and that he would meet us. And then when they told us that, a few of us went down there. Peter and Thomas looked inside the tomb. They saw it was empty, except for the linens. They were all folded up nicely. And then Mary saw Jesus. And best of all, he was just here. You just missed him. I think there was maybe a little bit of Thomas waiting to hear the words, Easter fools. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. When St. Paul uses that term, the message of the cross, he's actually talking about the totality of Jesus' life, the, the totality of the Christ event, if you will. That perfect God and perfect man is one person in Christ. And that Jesus, though he was holy and pure, suffered for all of humanity, that every sin that had ever been committed to that point and that every sin that ever would be committed following Jesus was imputed to him on the cross, that he suffered the wrath of God for sin, was exiled from him, and then he died, only to come back to life, that we might be forgiven in him, declared holy through him and welcomed into God's company forever. That's what St. Paul means when he says the message of the cross. And yet that message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. It means a few important things for us on this Easter Sunday. First thing I think it means is this. Easter faith, Easter faith is not merely having the information about Jesus. Easter faith is not the simple down low on Jesus knowing it. Thomas knew it. He had been with Jesus his entire public ministry. He knew the moment that Jesus was arrested. He was in the garden with them. He was there somewhere in the crowd as Jesus was nailed to the cross. He knew the grave in which their master had been hurriedly buried. Easter faith is not simply having the information about Jesus. Now, his friends probably tried to share a little bit more information. Maybe they brought back some of those things that had happened earlier. Do you remember how Jesus talked about the temple being rebuilt in three days after it had been toppled? Or about how, like Jonah was in the belly of the whale, the Son of Man would be in the heart of the earth for three days? 
And then there were those times where he point blankly said, I'm going to be rejected and killed and come back to life. Faith is not merely knowing the lowdown on Jesus. And faith isn't even believing that that information is accurate. Now, next Sunday, Vicar John is going to preach on the Thomas event. He's going to tell you the things Thomas said. I'm going to tell you today what you're not going to hear Thomas say next week. You know what Thomas doesn't say? Are you guys trying to pull some sick kind of prank? Is this some kind of cruel joke? Are you mocking me? I mean, this is lunacy. Sure, Jesus escaped that storm on the sea, as did we all. Sure, he he survived 40 days without food or water. And there were those times where he passed right through the crowd that was angry at him, but no one survives a Roman crucifixion squad. Jesus is dead. And indeed, dead he will stay. There's no other way. Dead people don't come back to life. You know why you won't hear Thomas say those words? Because on at least two occasions, Thomas witnessed a resurrection. The first time is when Jesus stopped a uh, funeral procession in mid-route, had the hearse put it into neutral, opened up the casket, gave the dead boy back to his mother. Second occasion was when Thomas himself was a central figure, was the resurrection of Lazarus. Everyone knew Jesus was in trouble with the authorities and yet his friend died. And Jesus said, you know what? Even though the village is right by where all the leaders are, we're gonna go down there. And Thomas said, let's go with him that we might die with him. And then instead of having a whole bunch of people interred, the dead man was released from the tomb. Exile from the grave came. He was alive again, restored to his sisters, Mary and Martha. Indeed, Thomas knew it all to be true. Historical factual resurrection was a historical factual possibility when Jesus was in the vicinity. Thomas doesn't say you're crazy or lying or deluded because resurrections and Jesus go hand in hand, kind of like April 1st and practical jokes. And yet what is pranked on Easter is not one lone disciple, nor even the first generation thereof, nor even all of the disciples gathered in all of the sanctuaries on this most holy of days. That which is pranked on Easter is that which thought it had the last laugh. The devil, the grave, the guilt and shame of sin. The devil was pranked on Easter. He figured even though he had been kicked out of heaven, At least he had God's son planted in the earth. Easter fools, he is risen. He is risen indeed. That which was pranked on that first Easter, the grave, which counted on the fact that it would never ever lose its prey again. No more resurrections because Jesus himself is in the grave. Easter fools, tomb, You can't shut God's son in, nor can you keep his children in forever. That which was pranked on that first Easter was the guilt and shame of sin, which was certain that because Jesus was stuck behind the stone, it would stick to you and to me forever. Easter fools, shame and guilt, you've been washed away in the blood of the crucified and risen one. And yet that message is foolishness to those who are perishing because it's not the way the external world works. It's not the pattern of our natural orientation or or inclination. I mean, who gives everything to their enemies when it costs them everything themselves? No one, save the one who could and did, and has, the crucified one. He is risen. He is risen indeed. And Easter faith is not merely having information about him. It's not even having uh, the uh, idea that that information is accurate. 
No, no, no. And Easter faith is not simply possessing the Pavlovian response that he is risen. Easter faith is not merely possessing the Pavlovian response that he is risen. Easter faith is, ah, mama didn't raise a fool. I'm not going to get into that uh, loop with you. Easter faith is actually a personal conviction. Easter faith, the faith I pray you have, the faith this day is all about. Easter faith is a personal conviction that what God has done in the perfect life, the innocent suffering and death, and the victorious resurrection of Jesus, he has done for you. So even if, like Thomas, on occasion, you've doubted God's promises, the message of the cross says that slate is clear. Even if, like Thomas, at times you've made demands of God to do this or that because that's what you think ought he do, the message of the cross proclaims that guilt is tossed as far as east is from west. And even if, like Thomas, at times your deeds or your determinations uh, have led to a, a, a communal, pejorative, title bestowed upon you, like the doubter, the message of the cross is that God only knows you by the title, beloved child of his, for the sake of the crucified one, Jesus, who is risen. risen No fooling. Amen.
invite you to stand and to confess with me our faith through the words of the second article. As a Christian, your very life is a daily confession that Jesus, who was crucified for your sin, has risen for your salvation. We believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God. What does this mean? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten the Father from eternity, and also a true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from the death, and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood, and with his As an act of response and discipleship, we give our tithes and offerings to the Lord. We do appreciate that, whether it is text to give or in the offering box or sent in to the uh, church office. Would you join me in praying? Oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death for us, and by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of the grave and promised us eternal life. May you give us to sin as we proclaim in our words that Jesus is alive. May we also bear witness in our deeds that he who is the reign with you and the Holy Spirit is alive in us and has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our day. You may be seated. At this point in our service, our Lord Jesus Christ comes to us in true body and blood, in with and under the bread and the wine. If uh, you've never communed here at Bethany or or never been here, I invite you to read our uh, communion statement found on page 9 of the bulletin. Um, This is Christ's true body and blood given and shed for you. See, on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had broken it, he gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, and we had given thanks. He gave it to him and said, drink of this, all of you. This is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you, for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. By dying, Christ destroyed our death. In rising, Christ has restored our life. In giving us his spirit, Christ has granted us peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. Before I invite you to share the peace, just a couple of things. Uh, There are gluten-free wafers for those who desire it, as well as uh, in the center of the tray there is alcohol-free grape juice. Uh, And so our choir is going to come uh, here in a moment, and they're going to commune, and then we'll have folks on the balcony, and then however the ushers decide to We'll do the narthex and then in here. Is that what we're doing? That's what I'm getting the signal. All right. Hey, as we've said, the peace of the Lord be with you all. I invite you to share that peace with one another.
invite you to stand. Now may this Christ, true body and blood, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith. And this day forward to life everlasting, going as peace. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank and praise you for feeding us this life-giving body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Send us your Holy Spirit, that having with our mouths received this holy sacrament, we may by faith obtain and eternally enjoy your divine grace, the forgiveness of sins, unity with Christ, and life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A couple of announcements uh, before we take off. Uh, we want to invite everyone, if it's dry enough, even if it's not, I don't care, uh, <laughs> out here in the Friendship Square to, uh, to celebrate the risen Christ together. There's going to be some uh, coffee, some donuts, some goodies. Uh, also, if uh, you already received the Bethany Bullet, um, you will be receiving that this week sometime, but if not, uh, we have copies of the chimes in the back. This is kind of all the going-ons around here at Bethany, uh, as well as some of the people that we are praying for right now. With that, receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you His peace. Amen. <laughs>